this is one of those cars which allows me to reinforce why I started this channel. Uh, I've never classed myself as a journalist. I've always classed myself as someone who is so passionate about cars that I want to share it with as many people as possible. And for me to do that, I wanted to effectively try and put as many of you in the seat as I possibly can through osmosis of the eyeballs. So without further ado, let's jump in the McLaren Senna, see what this thing's all about. Let's hit it. I think it is cool while we have this sort of exploded version of the Senna to run through a few things. Starting with what I would say is possibly the most iconic feature of this car, which is this incredibly large wing. It weighs uh, just under five kilograms, is able to take over a hundred times its own weight. I mean, look at that, that is absolutely effortless. This is one of the main components which contributes to the overall downforce of 800 kilograms. To give you some context, the P1 is around about 400 or just over 400 kilograms. This car weighs lighter than the P1 with almost double the downforce. Uh, it's unbelievable. Anyway, next thing, um, the heart of the car. Now, this is some context for you that I think says it all. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this whole tub is just 94 and a half kilograms. So that's the entire tub. This is Mono Cage 3. Uh, so this is an evolution of the 720S tub. The whole ethos of this car is all about lightweight. So the seat alone is 3.4 kilograms. Now, I'm not sure if the camera's doing this justice, but that edge that you see there, that is basically the entire thickness of the seat all the way around. And the manufacturing process is what they call balloon forming, which basically means this isn't solid inside. That's not a solid thick piece of carbon. Uh, these are two hollow thin skins, which are molded together to make this beautiful ultra lightweight sculpture. Lightweight is taken to an entirely different level with the wing, which, I mean, that kind of says it, <laughs> that kind of says it all. This is the entire front wing. Yes. So this is 660 grams, that's 0.66 kg. Um, don't forget, this is a road car. So this is homologated and crash test approved road car. How they've done this is Woking Witchcraft. And then further lightweight but incredible sculpture, this door. When you stand back from a completed car, you'd be forgiven for thinking that components like this and this incredible sill are additional parts which they sort of stuck on or screwed on. This is a single formed piece of carbon door and once again it's a joke how light that is. <laughs> it's incredible. I quoted a stat that said that each of these brakes takes around about seven months to produce and everyone in the comments was like that's a utter rubbish. I've confirmed this it's absolutely true obviously they're not making them one by one but a batch of these would take seven months um, so the layering and compression and heat treatment that is involved in the creation of these. I'm gonna convey this into words when we're out there. The stopping performance is truly, it's like a GT3 car levels of braking, it's incredible. I've been waiting for this moment for, since they announced this car, because the ethos of it is, is, is everything that you sort of want from a thoroughbred hypercar. Let's jump in and see what's what. Ah! Or not. Or there not. we go, you're in. Oh, no, this side's not done. Yeah. <laughs> Neck muscles, James, got it. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Cheers. starter button is like a fighter jet in the roof 
which is fantastic. Um, race mode on, like so. Okay, so, start finish straight in the McLaren Senna. Um, I'm gonna point you forwards on the camera for this one. This is the 200 yard mark and we're doing, <laughs> that was 285 kilometers an hour. <laughs> and honestly, at that breaking point, your organs smash to the front of your chest and even your eyes have somewhat of a squirm. And even then, I still think there was a couple of meters left in these in these brakes. They are absolutely sensational. What's been the most surprising thing about this car so far is actually how approachable it is. I mean, on paper, it reads quite scary. 800 kilograms of downforce, 800 newton meters of torque, and 150 kilograms lighter than the P1, which we all know set some incredible benchmarks. This thing, honestly and truly, I know the words race car for the road gets thrown around a lot. I'm amazed they even managed to get some license plates on this thing. It's just unreal. The lateral grip is fabulous. So, I'm sure here as well is just how razor sharp the gearbox is. There's no hanging around with this thing. It's so in tune. And what's great about it is the way that McLaren have dialed in this car. Ultimately, it is still a consumer car, so you're able to build up and up and work up to it. If this was the equivalent of a GT3 car that without active aero, it would be quite spiky and a lot more learning, but here we are, the 280. <laughs> so Honestly, the brakes are phenomenal. That's the number one thing that is just... <laughs> it's the braking. You've never felt anything like it, unless you've raced a, a serious race car. Nothing comes close. It's just incredible and even when it lets go you can see there it wasn't it was friendly you know when it lets go it's quite predictable even though it has this massive amount of downforce when a sort of fixed wing downforce car lets go <laughs> I mean it really lets go but this car it's not an intimidating place to be but you can experience I guess what it must be like to drive a GT3 car without having to have GT3 driver talent, really. It's incredible. <laughs> it really is just the ultimate track car that, if you so wish, you can drive home afterwards. Not sure how well your tyres would look, mind you, but it's got, with all this downforce, it really is applying the traction with effortless force. Steer a little bit there, my fault, I'm going a bit too deep. There. I mean, it still, don't get me wrong, requires a lot of concentration, but here we are now. Parabolica, you can adjust it when it starts to understeer on the throttle a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I'm no racing driver, and it makes you feel like a hero. Thing. Here we go again, this is the braking straight again. I've actually still got more to go there. I mean, that's mad to think. And I'm sure if you spend a lot of time in this, you could probably brake all the way up to the apex. day and age a lot of the cars in this bracket I mean even 720s straight line punch 
isn't a million miles off this, but when it comes into the dynamic ability of it, the, I know I keep going on about the brakes, guys, but seriously, it's all about this thing coming entirely into its own under the under braking and turning and downforce. here but more to the point pay attention to how they go down <laughs> look at that that is just seriously that is race car stuff there's just no debate it's absolutely exceptional you got to remember this thing has number plates Let me just de decant the okay. skid lid. Woo! Mate, <laughs> seriously, like, there must have been some backhanders going on to give this thing number plates. It's just absurd. I've not, yeah. Honestly, the closest thing that I've been in to this was an R8 LMS, which is essentially a VLN sort of World Endurance Championship platform proper GT3 racing car. And that was a real, like, you gotta be on the ball attack. You know, no active aero. The beauty of this is, think of this as almost like a de-restricted, no rules GT3 car for the road. So we say this a lot, don't we? That, oh, it's, it's like a race car for the road. Yeah. This is actually a race car for the road. Uh, it's, it's obscene, it's unbelievable. The best thing, and I think the thing which has surprised and delighted me the most, is how approachable it is. You look at those numbers on paper, they're like 800 PS, 800 kilograms of dike. You would think that when the aero would drop off a wing like that, that it would be super snappy, but because it's active, it, it, it almost does the bleeding off for you so everyone it all all of the downforce falls away gradually it's not really snappy i had one moment where i was slightly crossed up but it was instinctive i never had to think about it yeah. i think they've gone and done it again lads that, this is like an lt moment you know <laughs> but it's but it's it's in the q a that paul and i did earlier someone asked they were like you know what's how much of a step on is it really from a 675 lt an LT wouldn't know which way this thing, like literally wouldn't know which way this thing went. And I remember tracking my LT and it was on the edge, it was a bit spiky. This thing is even more approachable. Yeah. It's really, oh, you can build up to it, build up to it, build up to it. Before you know it, we were braking. I was doing, I was doing 100, 285K down this straight, braking at the like, just past the 200 yard mark. And as I'm building up to it, and because it's building you with so much confidence, you end up beginning to carry that braking even later into the apex and it all just keeps you super steady god knows what the electronics on this is doing it's probably got about 12 computers under there it's an absolute delight to drive it's approachable it's enjoyable i think it would still improve your driving skills because it's so fast what do we do now paul uh i think we uh, go where buy, do we go from here uh, buy a lot of lottery tickets yeah what can i say what can i say well done, McLaren. Absolutely sensational. That's, I'd love to try it at Silverstone. <laughs> hint, hint. If anyone can sort me out at Silverstone, because a track you know, you could benchmark it against yeah, yeah, other things. Yeah. So. Anyway, I'm going to put my hat on because I'm look like a Wookiee.
Okay, so that's it for my experience in the ridiculous McLaren 10. I thought it was quite appropriate and poignant to finish with the beautiful McLaren P1. In the background is just an example of how far and how fast this brand is evolving. You'll be seeing a lot more of this car online, I'm sure. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.